show its light and its heat, reveals a reality of things not known before. So it is with fruit which appears on the branches, flowers which appear in the garden, in response to the power of this sun. And so it is with Baha'u'llah, who is the sun of reality, whose light has lit up the spiritual sky, revealing the reality of things not so clear before. And one of these is the equality between men and women, which he describes as two wings of one bird. This is now a globally recognized and established fact, yet it wasn't always the case. In fact, in the past, the inequality persisted largely because of the lack of opportunities afforded to women. Yet despite this prejudice, there are numerous accounts in history where women have achieved the greatest of accomplishments. And one of these women is Tahereh, a poetess who lived in Iran in the 19th century. She was an ardent believer of Baha'u'llah and the Bab. She never met the Bab, she dreamt of him. And Professor Brown had this to write of Tahereh. He said, the appearance of such a woman in any country or in any age is a rare phenomenon. But in a country such as Iran, it is a prodigy, nay, almost a miracle. At birth, I was given the name Fatima. My society believed that women were little more than animals. The men in power interpreted the Quran to mean that women must not only be felt physically, but spiritually and mentally as well. My father, unusual for the time, allowed me an education. I would sit in the back of the class behind a veil, as girls were not allowed to go to school. I spoke up and challenged teachers and religious leaders. I longed for more, oh how I longed for it. I heard rumors of a new messenger of God, so at 26 years old, I left my family to find him. I fasted during the day and prayed and meditated at night. Finally, one night near dawn, I dreamt of a young youth wearing a black cloak and green turban. He appeared to me in the heavens, reciting verses and praying with his hands upraised. Even in that dreamlike state, I managed to memorize one of those verses I wrote it down in my notebook when I awoke. It was the most powerful dream, and later I found the exact same writing in one of the verses revealed by the Bab. I instantly recognized him and sent him this note in secret. The effulgence of thy face flashed forth, and the rays of thy visage arose on high. Then speak the word, Am I not your Lord? And thou art, thou art all your reply. The rest of my days I spent in sacrifice for my newly found faith. I was stoned, imprisoned, and even physically attacked by my own family. I challenged the high priests and clergy of the land, yet won over many hearts, even royal princesses and the Shah of Iran. Yet my heart had already been reserved for my Lord. If I met you face to face, I would retrace, erase. My heartbreak, pain by pain, ache by ache. Last, I, Tahira, search my heart, look line by line, what did I find? You and you, you and you, you and you. Tahira is most remembered for the single act where she appeared before an assemblage of men in 1848 in Badasht, Iran, without her veil. This caused such an electrifying and instantaneous outcry that one man present slit his own throat. By this act alone, she showed that the time has come for the unfurling of a new divine standard. After this, Baha'u'llah immortalized Sahara by calling her the pure one, showing that in no uncertain terms was a woman's purity or chastity to be determined by what she wore. In fact, Baha'u'llah says, our strength lies in the excellence of our character, in selfless service, in the independent investigation of the truth, and in the untiring promotion of universal peace.